I'm Salida Ebanks. I am with Women Management and I'm from New York City. Salida <laughs> Ebanks, new face, take three. It was 2000, year 2000, and I was a junior in high school. And all my friends kept saying, oh, you should model, you're mo you should model, you're skinny, you're skinny, and uh, whatever. And for me, my father's Jamaican, and we, he does not play the, the no education card. So it was always a conversation we would have, but it, school always seemed to win. Um, and I was around the time of SATs and things like that, and I was involved in some local charity work and things like that. And um, I was with New Yorkers for Children, SEMA Society. I'm sorry, SEMA Society for Children and New Yorkers for Children. There's so many, um, but back then it was SEMA Society for Children. And we went to Six Flags Great Adventures uh, as a summer trip for the kids. And I'm walking to the turnstile and I got scouted. One of my first editorials was the cover of Teen Vogue. Um, which I had no idea the caliber of what I was walking into. I just figured, oh, it's a photo shoot. Fun, you know, I was so naive. Um, but as time went on, my father actually was so strict that I wasn't allowed to, to model. Even though I re-signed the contract, uh, I remember Ralph Lauren on the agency called, and they said, Ralph Lauren wants you for the new campaign. My father said, well, what are the days they're shooting? They said, Tuesday, Wednesday. My dad says, negative, click, end of story. That's it, no. Beginning of my career, I was just extremely naive to the industry or even a work ethic because my father didn't allow me to work. I cried countless summers, please get over some a job. And my father was like, no. My mother, on the other hand, you know, she believed in hard work and, you know, so when I lived in the Cayman Islands, I worked at a florist, I worked uh, as a grocery bag girl. I mean, I did everything. Salita Ebanks, new face, take four. I was about 22 when that happened, when my life kind of went crazy. And I did think about, you know, well, you know, I can go back to school. I can be a lawyer. I can do other things. But now I think, reflecting back on that, I'm like, man, I'm so happy I stuck in there because my goals now, like now I want to produce. I want to write TV shows. I want to write, I'm filming a documentary on child mortality. Um, there's so much, I mean, ed editing and, ah. ah. There's so many things in this industry that I can do that I didn't have no idea back then. And if I would have given up, then yes, Victoria's Secret. Um, 2005, uh, one day, day of castings, my last six o'clock in the evening, you know, that's like the ending of the day. Uh, my agent calls me and says, Slita, there's a Victoria's Secret casting for a commercial. It's called IPEX. Um, you just have to say these lines. I IPEX, do you IPEX? I IPEX. Yeah. And so um, I said, okay, I'll go, of course, why not? I'll go. I, at that point in my career, I wasn't sexy. I didn't know how to be sexy. I didn't know what sexy was. I was either the commercial girl or the high editorial girl. So sexy was just not an equation. I didn't know how to arch my back or flip my hair or any of that stuff. So I went to the casting and um, there was no one there. I walk in, I'm like, oh man, I missed it. Oh well, you know. The lady comes out, oh no, no, come back, come back. You know, we'll, we'll put you on tape. And I get on camera, I do my thing. Uh, two days later, I found out that I got the commercial and Giselle Bunchen was gonna be in it. And I was the happiest chick. Oh my goodness, I was like near tears. I was so excited. That was an amazing experience. The five years being Victoria's Secret Angel was like amazing. Tyra Banks, Naomi Campbell, Heidi Klum, Giselle. I mean, I was there in the prime, you yeah, know, yeah, and a great experience. Yeah. Salida Ebanks, New Faces, take five. I, I would love to win an Emmy for something that I've written, produced. Um, I've always been a writer, so anything. I would love to have a, an amazing book that inspires other young women to pursue their goals and their dreams. Um, I would love to have hundreds of hospitals for child mortality all over Southeast Asia and Africa. Um, I would love, I mean, I dream. And you know what's crazy? Because I say they're dreams, but I know that they can happen. And they will, because I am so determined.